I was on Twitter just a little while ago, answering some tweets, putting out some tweets, and I saw something in my timeline that made me pause. It was a young lady. Her name is kind of crazy. And she had her future goals. It was of a mate carrying her at college graduation, this huge, opulent mansion lifestyle. And then the third picture was a picture of her, well, not her, a representation of her and her desires of a woman and a dude literally swimming in money. And I looked at this, and it just kind of hit me, because I see this all the time, I see this all the time, that people want to become wealthy, and there's nothing wrong with becoming wealthy, I highly encourage it, but there is the start point, and there's the end goal, and all of this shit in the middle is not there. That's the problem, because I look at it, people are chasing money for the sake of chasing money. And as I step back through my life, when I increased my service, I increased my income. I'll tell you a little trick here. Uh, this is a trick that I'm doing. It's been doing it on YouTube for years. Uh, someone accused me of doing it and uh, they were right. But what I put out in terms of, cause I believe in sowing and reaping. You know, people call it karma. I just call it universal law is if you throw enough rocks, you're going to hit something. If you stand out in your yard every day and there's this big pile of rocks and you take that rock, a rock from the pile and just throw it in the same spot in the middle of the street every day consistently, eight hours a day, right? Cars are driving up and down that street. You're going to hit a car sooner or later. You, by not changing nothing. Stand in the same position, grab a rock, release. Grab a rock, you're gonna start, you're gonna hit cars. Because, see the thing is, what many people fail to understand is, if you're consistent, at times the wavelengths of the universe will come your way. But if you're chasing the wavelengths, you may miss them because of a different vibration. And essentially, this is about increasing your service, about helping people, because you know, when you increase your service, you, you serve someone. You're in the position of servitude. And we live in a culture where, you know, you have many people who refer to themselves as a boss and they can't even run their own fucking lives, but they're the boss of whatever. I'm the boss, like a boss. Like, really? Where's your enterprise? Where's your company? Where's your things that you're running? Where is this? And it's because a lack of education. It's because a lack of how you do that there. Now this is the trick that I've been doing on YouTube. There is roughly 500 hours of content on this channel. And I will, t this is the great trick. If you watch all of the videos it will enable you to make money. Now, the thing is, watching the video is just the first part. The second part is action. The second part is action. The second part is buckling down and creating action. Now, this is one of the things, and I've noticed this comes frequently when I change up things because I, I'm a data-driven person. I knew the storage auction thing was gonna go peter out at some point, I knew it. It lasted longer than I thought because uh, I've talked to some people out there, I know locally, I've talked to people across the country. You know, it's prices have kind of leveled out, but they're much higher than when this thing started. And that's a natural progression of the business because every year I was in, certain type of units just got more and more expensive because more people came out and information was dispersed because people like hey because you know one of the things that helped me was figuring out buying 10 by 20s consistently gave me a greater financial yield than just playing the lottery if i went out and bought nothing but 10 by 20s got all the 10 by 20s i can get my hands on whether it was a shit room for a dollar or it was like a ooh we fall from the ruler to the tuda 
glorious. I mean, you just see the gold dropping off the chair, and I'm paying two G's for that. I consistently made money from those units. And as that information filtered out throughout the storage auction ecosphere, people started the unit price went up. But I knew that this thing wasn't going to last forever. And I made plans for it because I'll be straight up honest with you. Uh, I really enjoy my life. I'm very grateful for my life in terms of, here it is. It's like, uh, what is it? 10 o'clock in the morning. I got up, wrote for a little while, did some stuff and some other stuff. And I'm done for the day. I am done for the day. I have learned how to make more with less by having a plan and being consistent. That's the key. Consistency. 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 If you show up every day, you're going to win. You're not going to win every day that you show up, but if you show up every day, you will win some days. And that is the problem because people are looking for the sure fucking thing. I got to have the sure thing. I don't know about that. Am I going to lose money? From me to you. If you do not know what the fuck you're doing when you go into business, chances of you losing money are exceptionally high. Yeah, you're going to lose money. Yeah, you're going to lose some fucking money. Yeah, you're going to be humiliated. You're going to make mistakes. And this is where we find out if you are the man or the woman you want the world to think that you are. If you're the man or the woman that you want the world to think that you are, you are going to get up, put your band-aids on, ice pack, whatever, from the dumps, the bruises, the stuff of life, and you're going to press forward. Now, if you are not the man or the woman you want the world to think that you are from your face, fancy Twitter handle, your fancy Facebook page, your wonderful Instagram photos, you are going to turn into a scared little bitch. You're going to tuck your tail between your legs and you're going to the corner of life. Because one of the reasons that I can talk this shit to you is I know what the, that death moment is. Now, the death moment, and there's two of them. There's the death moment. There's the day that that coward in you dies, if he ever existed. There's some people who are born brave and they never had that problem. But there's a day that that coward, that little bitch, that little scared little girl, that little punk ass dude, they die. I was reading this wonderful review on Amazon. It was about John Green's book, The Fault is in Our Stars. I think that's the title. And it was from this kid who had cancer. And this kid was checking adults because people were reading the book. And they were like, these do not sound like adults. And the kid was like, well, when you get cancer, you grow up very fast. I agree with the kid. I used to work in the medical industry. I used to treat people with cancer. I used to work in a pediatric facility and you know, take the blood, do samples of stuff of kids who had leukemia and all types of cancer. And all of these kids who were, I mean, seriously, you'll see a six-year-old kid who was calming the mom and the dad down who were freaking the fuck out. I saw this because the kid, I mean, they know. It's like, I have this thing and understand, when a kid or a husband or a wife or someone in the family gets cancer, everyone gets cancer. And what I mean is, that cancer becomes their life. It becomes their reason for living. It becomes their reason to do whatever they're doing. Everything else pales by comparison. I call that stripping away of the bullshit. So you have these kids who are already innocent, who are pretty pure, and then they have this thing, and they go from a, pos a position of truth and honesty, and they deal with it from a level with a level of courage that sometimes still makes me it holds me keeps me in awe. I've met some freaking awesome kids who knew they were dying, who walked around with dignity, a certain nobility, and they made other people who were not afflicted by the cancer feel better about this thing called life. And that's one of the reasons that when my coward died in 1999, my little bitch coward, you know, I had to learn how to be brave. I, I had to learn how to whip up some courage. I reflected and looked at those people as models for being strong. 
You don't have any money. You don't have any money. You're not where you want to be in life. Okay, you're not where you want to be in life. Let me give you something else for you to hold on to. Pretend. Because this is going to be very scary. Pretend that someone yesterday, a doctor said, you have a terminal illness and you're going to die very soon. Now, go through this exercise because it's going to be very fucked up. It's going to be very, very fucked up. Go through this exercise. And then after you go through that emotional roller coaster, because just the mere thought of it is enough to fuck you up. Just the mere thought of it. Hey, I'm going to die. Now, I've actually thought about it. One of my friends said that's pretty damn morbid. I thought about how I want to die. And I've thought about, I know this is really crazy. I've thought about certain scenarios of what I would do if, like, say, I got jumped by some guys. And it was clear that I was going to die. Would I beg for my life or would I fight? I would choose to fight. I've thought about if I got a terminal illness, I would try to make other people feel better about it because once I'm gone, I'm gone. And I really thought about it. And when you go through this stuff, the shit's scary as fuck because your life is the most important, most valuable thing you have. And when you think about losing it, it puts things in perspective. So go through this exercise. Think about, hey, you're going to die tomorrow. Are you going to die next month? Are you going to die next year? Then compare and contrast the problems that you think that are so huge to that. Guarantee you, things will start slipping into place like they never slipped before. Uh, this is one of the reasons, because people are like, yeah, you know, you don't have a house, and you know, you're, you're this financial guy, and you don't have all of these accumulants of a financial guy. And I don't give a fuck what someone else has. I learned to chase my dream and live my life. And it's going to be radically different from how you chase your dream and live your life. I can give a fuck about a house. I mean, seriously, the only reason I am considering going back into that again is because of family. That's it. You know, if I get married again, bam, we'll get a house. Because it ain't about me anymore. Right now, it's, you know, it's, it was kind of about me. And that would move me from the place that I am because other people need to be considered. But if it's just, you know, because I thought about it. When you really think about it from a common sense perspective, it's just you and you live in a 5,000 square foot house. And it's just you. From a common sense, forget all about status, proceed. From a common sense perspective, it makes no sense. None. None. And I thought about this years ago. You will have several individuals living in these big houses by themselves and you'll have a family of four five, six, seven, eight people live in a two-bedroom apartment. This shit's common. <laughs> it's common. But those people don't know how to generate wealth. So it's not just, I'm not going ahead and bashing folks who have achieved and have the ability to buy this stuff. I am all about capitalism, all about business and enterprise. But I'm also about living an authentic life. Um, having a house and you've got rooms that the vacuum tracks from last year are still in the carpet because you never went in the room. Doesn't really make any sense. It really doesn't to me. That's just me. And I will say this. I judge people and so do you. All this stuff. We don't judge anybody. Discrimination is a form of judgment. Perspective is a form of judgment. Thinking and coming up with an answer is a form of judgment. Look up the definition of judgment. We all do it. This whole thing. Only God can judge. We judge every day. When you see someone looking funky and you make a comment, that's a judgment. When you see someone and they go, damn, he's cute. Wow, she's fine. That's a fucking judgment. One of the reasons that we have such piss poor communication is many people are using words and they don't understand the meaning of the word. They put their own meaning, which isn't so bad because language is fluid and it doesn't stop. But this person's putting their definition on the word and this person's putting this definition on the word. And they're both using the word and thinking it has the same context, and it doesn't, which means there's a level of incongruency and a lack of communication known as the disconnect. I say all of this because the big disconnect is many people are taught that wealth is having possessions. And the best way to get possessions is to get money. And to get money is to get money at any means necessary. I have certain philosophical places I will not go. I know we are becoming, you know, I make a joke that, you know, when weed comes to Georgia, I'm open for weed shop. 
intrinsically, it's never going to happen. I don't believe in drugs. I know weed is not a drug. Uh, uh, whatever. I'm not going to do it. And I know someone else is going to do it. But I'm probably not going to open up the weed. It's just a fantasy that I like to play with myself of me being a weed man. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen because fundamentally, I don't believe in that stuff. Um, I'm one of those people that I don't take medications or anything unless I absolutely have to. If you go ahead and did some kind of uh, screen on me for the number of drugs that I've taken in my life, it would be very minimal. I have not taken an aspirin this year, painkiller. I did do some stomach acid. I had some Tums. Yeah, I had some Tums. And, yeah, because uh, my ulcer thing was trying to rear up because of a personal issue. And I took it. I can tell you, that's it. <laughs> that's what. That's it. That's the only medication that I've taken this year. And part of that is, one again, one of my philosophical beliefs is, that you need to go to the core of the issue versus addressing symptoms, which is what people are doing when they're like, I want all this money. I can tell you, money is not going to make you happy. Experiences, love, being with good people, good food will make you happy, which you need money to get this stuff. But just going for money for the sake of money is a fool's errand. And people will do it and they'll get there. And if they're in that vehicle that gets the money, but that vehicle has got a prick up their ass, pun intended, and that prick's got spikes, they're driving like this. But they're getting that money. But internally, they're bleeding out. And sooner or later, they're going to OD on that blood. And essentially, this is why you see people who become very, very famous, very, very rich, and either they crack up become alcoholics or OD on some drug is because the insides is all fucked up. The outside looks great. They're living that life. They're driving that uh, Bentley and they're going to all these fancy places, but internally they are morally, spiritually bankrupt. Happiness does not live there. And you can have people who become very rich. And I think this is one of the reasons that guys who really, guys, women who get really, really rich, start really giving back because they're chasing that happy you know because it, it does make you happy to serve someone i remember i was uh working at scottish right in the office building and there was this one patient this little guy really was just special to me because sometimes you connect with patients you know you don't connect with everybody and he would come in and i actually made him a paper freaking airplane right just to keep him occupied because he was wilding out. He got happy, gave me a little smile. That made my freaking day. It was an act of service. And one of the things that I learned and really get lead the field by Earl Nightingale he talks about this. As you increase your service, you're going to increase your income. Now, many people are looking at me like I am Boo Boo the Fool because I am putting out a shitload of products, right? Information, courses, doing this stuff. And I've had many people email me, private message me, hey, slow down. Why? <laughs> Why should I slow down? Well, and I'll be the first thing. My shit's a little raggedy right now because I'm pushing myself. If my shit was clean, perfect, you know what that would mean? I give a fuck what other people think about me. That's what it means. It's like, well, you know, and being a writer, this is a big issue because... I've seen people who are literally afraid to put their work out because someone may say something bad. Boo fucking who? Really? Someone's going to say, hey, I don't like your shit? Uh, it wasn't really that good to me. Uh, yeah. There are people who love writing, but because no one will read their shit, they don't write anymore. Boo fucking who? I mean, really? Once again, Go back to what I told you in the beginning. Imagine that some doctor in a coat at his desk and he said, Mr. Boo Boo or Mrs. Boo Boo, um, you've got 30 days to live. You got 60 days to live. You, got, you know, you might you might do five years. With that information, what are you going to do going forward with your life? I didn't get that. I got sick. I was in a fucking hospital bed. I couldn't move. I needed to depend on other people. Didn't like that. 
God, I didn't like that being in that position. I actually had to go up two flights of stairs to get to the bedroom and was winded. Had to lay down on the bed and recover for an hour because I was that depleted health-wise. At that point, I made some decisions. I made some decisions. It's like, you know what? This is your fucking wake-up call. You always wanted to be a writer. You always wanted to communicate. You always want to do this stuff. Do it. And do not let anyone, any situation, or anything that arise get in your way. I will tell you, I had a family issue that popped up, and it was either handle that family issue or do my dream. I chose my dream. And I became the shit bird of the family, and it's like, oh, you're a horrible son. So be it. And I'm glad I made that decision because it changed my life. If I did not do that, I would not have the life that I have today. A life of freedom, where I can sit here in the parking lot after having a great breakfast and talk to you and not worry about, I gotta get back to that job. I gotta get back to work. I, I don't have to worry about that shit. And this is one of the reasons that I'm putting out more shit, putting out more stuff, making it making it clean. Because, see, this is the thing, and this is what I learned. And you talk to any writing group, like, if you put out a bad book or there's something wrong, there, there's, the, you know, people that buy a book, they're never going to buy it again, which is true. But there's 6.5 billion people in the world. They won't buy it. They don't like it. You fucked up. Okay, next. <laughs> he didn't like it. Next. I'm going to tell you something, and this is something that I figured out, and this is the reason that and uh, some of my female friends really don't like it, is I have become, not jaded, because at heart, I am, I am a romantic. It just takes the right woman to bring it out, but I know that if I just show up, I can be anywhere. If I go to a restaurant, and there's 10 women in that restaurant, and I do the appropriate Prop the appropriate body language confirmation. If I approach all 10, I'm leaving with a date, and if my shit's really crisp, I'm getting fucked that night. Most people will not talk to one, there are dudes who will not talk to one new woman a week, will not do it, waiting to be introduced or to randomly meet someone to right way. Your soulmate could be a quick trip pumping gas. And because your little cowardly ass won't go over there and say, hi, you could miss out on your soulmate. And people just like hate when I bring that shit up because there's this way, and this is kind of like success. People feel that success is going to come on in this linear path. Success is like this. Bam, failure. Drop, descent. Oh, success. Boom, fall. Bam. It's like a boxing match. You bob, you weave, you, you land a lick, life lands a lick. And it's round after round after round. Except there's no 10 rounds. There's no 20 rounds. There's no 30 rounds. There's no 40 rounds. You know, there's like every decade is 10 rounds. So if you live to 70, that's 70 fucking rounds. If you live to 90, that's 90 fucking rounds. So as long as you live, you are in that boxing ring with life. And if you get extra crispy, extra slick with your shit, you are winning round after round, point after point, and sometimes you come up with that uppercut and you get the fucking knockout. Sometimes you knock life the fuck out and you're like on cloud 36. That uppercut is dangerous. And then you, you keep fighting, right? And you learn that life has some weaknesses. Life can't stand up to consistency. Life can't stand up to positive thought. Life cannot stand up to tenacity. It will just, because see, life is like consistent. But if you're consistent and you bring more action, you beat life down. Imagine that. You get to beat life down versus being beat down by life. That is within your power. That is within your rim of possibility. But... That's why you don't have to have these fantasies of getting money just to get money because you can go out and buy stuff to make your inner fucking child happy because that motherfucker didn't get shit for Christmas when he was six. Many people are chasing the shit they didn't get as kids as adults. I know it's a very, very controversial statement and I will stand by it because as I went through my the death of my coward, that that first death moment. I remember there's two. 
There's the death of that coward, that little bitch, that little scum in you. And then there's your transition to just the spirit realm. If you, on that first death moment, let the little bitch wins, then that beautiful person, the fantastic person, that hero, that shiro, whatever you want to call it, dies. And then you see these people. They're bitter. They're very cynical. They, they can't dream. They always just like, yeah. And even the nicest ones will just say, well, I don't know about that. You think you can do that? Uh, you, you think you have the uh, possibility to actually do it? And they'll say it very nicely. What they're, what they're doing is projecting their mediocrity and their low expectations of themselves onto you. And you have a choice. You could be like, talk to the hand. Or you could be like, you know, freaking Captain America, right? Put your shield up and repel that shit. Because essentially it's all a choice. It's all a choice because when I look at stuff and this is one of the reasons that I have clarity on certain things I don't watch television and I pick stuff out for me this vehicle that I'm in it took me two years to buy this shit because I actually had to confirm that it is what I really wanted and because I get a vehicle I'm in that shit for a long time so I got to be really happy with it because it, you know it's you know constantly flipping vehicles keeps you poor if you're on that mundane social job level now, if you're like got 10 million, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can have eight vehicles. You can have 20. You pay cash for them. It doesn't matter. But if you're on that regular level, you can't keep buying vehicles and flipping shit. It's just costing you money, a lot of money. But defy, def decide and define what's for you. And then go out and build a business on that. Notice I did not say passion. Passion is one of the greatest Jedi mind. Just follow your passion and the money will come. And this gets confused and diffused by there are people who are really passionate about something and they make millions. And it's like, yeah, it, it doesn't work like that for everyone. Everyone doesn't have a passion. If your passion is karaoke and you go to the karaoke club and you're real good and you win all the awards, what do you get for karaoke? A gift certificate? Free beer? I don't know. I don't do karaoke. But Essentially, if your passion is in line with something that can serve a lot of people, yes, you can become financially wealthy. If that passion is in line with something that serves a lot of people. And I'm going to keep saying that serves a lot of people. Because many of you are trying to get rich without doing anything or really benefiting anybody. And that's why you keep... <laughs> I can't break through! This hymen is tough! Shit! I want the fuck! You can't get the fucking. You can't because you, 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 you're in the wrong position. You're not serving enough people. You're not serving enough people. That's why you can't break through. And this is the reason that I make a shitload of videos. This is the reason I'm always doing stuff. This is the reason I'm always experimenting. Because I do something here on YouTube. I track my uh, measures. This time last year, I'm up. 35 38,000 views that's what 38 I'm up 35 38,000 views differential between this time last year and this year which is not you know for the month not just per day for the month which you know people are like that ain't really a lot compared to you know Woody Woo Woo who does the uh whale hunting videos you know he gets 38,000 views in a second I'm not competing with him I'm competing with me and I kicked my own ass and won because that is success. Now, if I can go up another 30,000 this time next year, that is a sign of success. And it's also a sign of something else that many people do not really appreciate. Consistent forward progression or a vertical. I'm consistently, you know, I'm not like doing this. I'm not doing hockey stick growth. I'm doing this. I'm getting, I'm going up the hill. But the thing is, I'm not sliding back down. I'm going up, 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 up. And at some point, you know, let's take this vertical. Use your imagination. It's like, psh, right? And I'm down here. But I'm, you know, over time, wait a minute. I am past this. I'm because of consistency. Consistency of serving a lot of people. Uh, one of the best things that I get from YouTube is, hey, Glendon, I just found your videos today. I think you're fucking awesome. Man, I love this. I needed this video. I needed this video. And sometimes it comes from a video that only has 500 views. 
Sometimes it only comes from a video from way back when it only has like, you know, 400 views. But someone found that video that I made five freaking years ago and got benefit from it today. That's called inventory. This is why I'm doing this digital thing. Uh, there are people, and I understand, resale is cool, resale is hot. And they can't, I was like, why would you leave resale and do this shit? Because I have a vision for my future, not your future, not her future, not his future, not Boo Boo the Cat's future, but my future. And my future is of producing content, nonfiction, fiction, video, and podcasting. Because these things could be forever and ever. I could do some shit that people like, and for 10 years they like that shit, and I get paid for it for 10 years. What can you go out and pick and sell on eBay that's going to pay you for fucking 10 years? I'm waiting. Nothing! <laughs> Not a damn thing! You can't do this. <laughs> you can't do it. And that is the limitation of why when I was forced out of resale and I got into this, I was like, oh. I mean, you know, a lot of people think it's like not that real powerful, but for me to go from nothing in the business I never had before, to write a book, to make enough money to live on, within 14 months from scratch, it was very powerful to me. It was a life-changing moment. It was like, whoa, what can I do this to the times 10? If it takes me 10 years to get to that times 10, cool. I, because, once again, that gradual progression, serving more people, putting yourself out there. Another thing about getting money. I'm an old school guy because I grew up in a world of physical businesses, and I had a few physical businesses. So, I understand physical business growth, and I understand internet growth, and I also see this trend, what I call the burnout. Company comes up, blows up, IPO, people at the top. You know, the first 10, 30 employees all become instant millionaires. Then the company goes away or becomes highly irrelevant. MySpace is still around, but who, who uses MySpace? A few people, but not many. So it went wham, and then it went bam. I don't want to be wham, then bam. I want to be uh, uh, uh. If I could do that for the rest of my life, I'm happy. Because I am consistently going up. Uh. Because when you look at it over a period of decades, you know, oh, damn, that's fantastic. It's like, you know, that's like 10,000% growth over time. But you have to keep, uh, you have to keep doing it. You have to keep serving people. You have to keep putting stuff out there. But when you're like basing your business model on internet models, you're going to be highly disappointed because most internet models also fail. Because people are all caught up in that. Well, we need to be at 5 million users in 12 months. For everyone to get an IPO, cash out, and all these venture capitalists get their money back. I don't look at those businesses for my business. My business plan is totally different because it's based in reality. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I'll tell you. This is how my plan to serve a lot of people. I did a study. I looked at a bunch of authors like Jay California Cooper, uh, Ton of the Reef do. I looked at people and they're called mid-list authors. They are not household names. Unless some, some of them get a movie made out of their books or maybe a lifetime special. But these people have 15 to 20 books. And that's called a backlist. Inventory for your resale guys. And what happens is someone comes and they find one book and they buy. They don't buy all 20, they'll buy four or five. And this process keeps happening, happening, and happening. And they have this life where they don't have to work a job and they get money. Now, from a traditional publishing standpoint, they get money, but they actually leave a lot of money on the table because they're not in, in charge of their future like I am. So with me, by going ahead and creating those books, uh, I really think it's going to get super classy, super crisp around book 2025. 20, but I'm still making money to live on while I get to that point. That's the whole thing. And I, I will admit that I have a lot of freedom that you don't have if you have a job, you have a family. Um, you just can't like, hey, you know, I'm going to like uh, quit my job. And I don't know how many people have convinced not to quit their jobs because they have families. I am not about breaking up families or saying, oh, you should go off and do this was. I will tell someone if you, if it's just you and the wife and you don't have any kids, I would be like, hey, go for it. But if you married and you got kids. It's a different ball game. You're going to have to do your dream on uh, the weekends and then the evening until that dream starts producing enough money to take care of those folks. That's what you're going to have to do. 
but essentially I looked at these authors and I looked at this stuff over and over and over and over and over and I was like yeah, I can make a living doing this I can make a living doing this it's about the inventory it's about the, the, and that's the thing but once again that's uh keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going just keep uh mm, mm. oh yeah baby oh yeah baby. you know at one point in the beginning it's like hey this I'm not really sure about this it kind of feels good then you know you kind of put your hips in and you're like whoa yeah baby yeah ba and that's just me and, and this is another thing you know I know that's extremely sexual but I do this because this is the G-verse the G-verse is for me and it's for people who like me if you don't like me and that's like oh god that's just terrible that's just so terrible the G-verse isn't for you but what did I say not too long ago there's 6.5 billion people I don't need a billion people I don't even need a million. I don't even need a hundred thousand. I need just a few thousand people to come to the G-verse and go, hey, I like this, and push the purchase button, and I can have an incredible life off just a few thousand people lifetime. Not even 10,000 people. Uh, probably, let's see, I've sold 15,000 books so far that I, I actually stopped keeping track of that. But... There were several books that I don't really know how many different customers there was because a lot of people bought have bought every book that I put out. So it's not 15,000 people. It might be five. It might be seven. I don't, I'm not really sure. But because, you know, with Amazon, and this is stuff that was sold on Amazon, I don't know who bought what because I don't have that information. They know, but they're not telling anybody. So going forward, let's just go ahead and say 15,000 people. I get 15,000 people in the G-verse to buy my products. I can make seven figures annually on 15,000 people. Not a million, not 30,000, not 15,000 people. And this is why I'm having this conversation with you about service and getting rich. Many of you are basing your expectation on internet models and you're forgetting that, you know, that restaurant down the street, the owner does about 1.2 million gross. He only serves about 150 people a day. You know, so let's time that. That's like 150. That's 3,000. And many of these people are repeats. So there's not individual uh, customers. So about three, we're talking about 36,000 people a year. Not millions, not 100,000, not so. It's 36,000. There are many businesses in your town where the owner has become rich just serving a few hundred people. Uh, you know, take real estate. If you're a real estate agent and you sell 30,000 houses in your lifetime, you probably are one of the most successful real estate agents ever. I mean, shit, you sell 2,000 houses lifetime. I think that puts you in some super club. I'm not sure. I'm not a real estate guy. But what I'm saying is think about service. Think about building your business over time. And think about being consistent. That's how you get rich. You get rich in time. You get rich in sanity. Because I think this is the most sane I've ever been because I'm not running around, because I was a storage auction business, I was just like going. I mean, it took me a few years to calm down, because it was, I mean, it's a it's a hustle business. You gotta hustle. Go to the auctions, get the shit loaded, put put it on Craigslist, put it on even. It's hustle, hustle, hustle. If you ain't moving, you're not making money. So now I'm like, oh, it's a whole different business model. This is a whole different thing. And you know, just for those, you know, people, every time I mention health, I'm fine, I'm good, health's great. And I want it to stay great. I mean, I could deadlift 600 pounds, squat 500 pounds. If it wasn't for this nagging pinch nerve, I could probably be benching 400. But, and walking, meditation, working on my vegetable smoothies and stuff like that. So I'm really working on that. But I have to be incredibly grateful that I can sit at my desk at my place and type on two computers, because I usually have my desktop and I'm doing all kinds of stuff, and put out content and information and help people, and these people buy and support this channel, and I have this life of freedom. I have to be very, very grateful for that, because I was just talking to someone this morning who, you know, the conversation was cut short, because she had to go to work. I don't have that. So, you know, to those of you who support the G-verse, thank you, appreciate it. And to those of you who don't support the uh, G-verse, 
Thank you. Go find someone else you can support and get your raggedy, janky ass life in order. And with that, <laughs> this is Glenn the Cameron, and I approve this message, and I'll see you on the good side. If you like this stuff, you know what it is. There's boxes here or here, but they're somewhere. Just go ahead and pick what you like, but make sure you get the free audiobook. Uh, make sure that you get join Hustlers University. And also, there's a special deal here at the end of this video. And don't tell anybody and don't put it in the comments. It's for those of you who made it to the end. And the reason I do this is because people who watch all these videos take action. So you take action. I'm going to give you a little love to help you take even more action.